Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. <clears throat> Today we're going to talk about Don't Set Your Subwoofer on the Floor Part 2. This is a continuation of our top 10 most viewed videos. We're going to expand on each, each video uh, in the top 10 and add some more things to it. So what is a subwoofer? Let, let's step back a little bit and think about what is a subwoofer. For those of you who are in my generation or a little bit younger, it's a muscle car. Now, what was a muscle car? It was a car that had a big engine, big horsepower, big output, guzzled gas, seven miles to the gallon. <laughs> I remember I had one of these. I had a Chevelle 396. And uh, it was great, you know, when you were 18 years old to have that much power underneath you, those big block engines. And uh, it was great. So what is it? It's a high energy, low frequency producing pressure device. You ever been to a drag race and watch these cars that run on nitro, uh, the pressure? I mean, it actually can deform your face and make your pants move. And it's, it's really, sound pressure is very, very uh, big. And you have to kind of understand that. So why would we take a muscle car, low frequency pressure generating device and set it on a floor? Does that make sense? Even worse, we're going to fire the driver into the floor. Does that make sense to you? I mean, step back and think a little bit about it. We got to do three things to a subwoofer. We have to elevate, we have to isolate, and we have to attenuate. We have to elevate, we have to get it off the floor. Now, we're, we have a new uh, research and development facility uh, for multi-channel sound, and we're going to be doing exactly this. We're going to start with it on the floor, take measurements. We're going to start with it one foot off the floor, take measurements, two foot, three foot, four foot, in real time. And we're going to do 30 second, you know, RTA uh, shots of it. So you can actually see it move. You can see the difference in the movement. That's what you want to see. You want to see the movement over time. You don't want to see a picture. You don't want to see one frame of a movie. You want to see the whole movie. You want to see how the whole thing moves. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And you're going to see a lot of benefits to this. You're going to see a lot of benefits to elevating in room response, especially 30, 40, and 50 cycles. You're going to see a lot of uh, ele uh, isolation benefits, keeping it off the floor. And you're going to see a lot of improved response by doing that. We have 15-foot ceilings in our new facility. Whew, thank God for that one. So we're going, to, we're going to really push this. We're going to do one foot, two foot, three foot. I may even go up to 10 feet. We'll see. We got the facility. We got the people. We got the materials. Let's see what we can do. Okay. And we'll do all uh, videos on it so you can see. The thing about the floor, especially use uh, those of you out there that are on wood frame floors, is you get that floor moving. You fire all that low frequency energy into it. That causes the floor to start moving. It becomes diaphragmatic. I'm very familiar with that process. If the whole floor is moving, you have a big speaker. You have a lot of surface area that's moving. So that's a crazy situation. That's noise. We don't want that. We don't want quantity. We want quality. We want attack and decay rates. We want the fundamental and the harmonic to be heard. We want the fundamental get out of the way of the harmonic, not to just bloat and become mud and soup where we can't pick out anything, even fundamentals or harmonics, okay? So we want quality, that's our goal. We have a product, our sub-platform on casters. It has to be on casters because you have to move it around in the room. You can voice and listen and, and hear the changes in response, or you can run around the room with an RTA and. Measure it yourself. There's, there's ways to do that. It's on casters, so it gives you that kind of flexibility. Most sub cables are long today, so, and, and most subs are self-powered. So you don't. In the old days, we used to have to run subwoofers with separate amplifiers. So we had long speaker cables going to the subwoofer. We don't have that anymore. The amps are inside the cabinets, which may or may not be a good thing. Our subwoofer platform is our ACDA12 technology, 30 to 50 hertz. That's the frequency range that you need to really address the most. 
And the nice thing about the subwoofer platform is you can attenuate or absorb right next to source. That's the best way to get it. That's the best uh, location to get it, as much energy as you can. Once the energy is released into the room and becomes the domain of the room, then it's subject to the dimensions of the room, the construction methodology of the room, and a whole host of other variables. So we want to get it, whatever we got to get, so to speak, at that point close to the source. Don't set your subwoofer on the floor, part two. A little more elaboration than part one. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.